Many of us have been doing church differently. Sunday mornings have become a bit more casual. Living rooms have become sanctuaries and fellowship has a new, less personal touch. It hasn't been easy, yet here we are. Gathering, worshipping, learning, being the church. Now, more than ever, we are reminded of a simple truth. The church is not a building, it's the body of Christ. It isn't built with bricks and mortar, but with faith and hope and love. In the midst of uncertainty, our calling remains the same, to share the truth of the gospel with a world God loves. Throughout history, the church has grown in difficult times, and today is no different. We are still the church, we're just doing things a bit differently. Good morning and welcome to you all. Welcome to the online, the new, well, we've been doing it now for a long time, haven't we? Ever since the uh, beginning of the lockdown, the online Estuary Elam Church service. Another church that we've uh, linked into because of COVID. It's great to come together and worship together. We are one church online, whether we're online, whether we're in a building, wherever we come together, we are one church under the umbrella of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Isn't it fantastic that we can all come together? Even if we don't go to a church building, now we can come together online. It's really fantastic. So if you're, wherever you're coming from, whether you're listening to us uh, through the Estuary Elam group of churches, or whether you're coming to us through Facebook or online in some other way, we welcome you all. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's great to come and worship Jesus together as one church. Let's bow our heads and pray and open the service this morning. Father God, we do thank you that, that we can come together as one church under Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Lord, we pray this morning that as we come together and worship, and we know, Lord, that there are churches that are coming together face to face, all over the country, all over the world. Right at this time, there are other churches that have got services online, just like we are at the moment. Lord, we pray that you will be glorified in everything that is done, said and sung. Lord, be glorified in all things that we do together this morning. And we pray, Father, that everything that is done, that you love it and you love us, Lord. We know you love us. And Father, we just want you to be glorified in everything that is done this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning, we've got a, a, a different kids slot this morning coming from the Saddleback Church. So over to the kids slot this morning. Stories of the Bible, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul 
Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way, and as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt, and he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, and he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. That's great. I love the story of Paul. It's a person who was ridiculed and killing Christians. We all know it's a person who was who hated Christians. He wanted to go around and just kill them all. He thought he was doing God's work, didn't he? And yet he got saved. Jesus come into his life. And that just reminds me of myself and so many of us where may, many of us may not have known Jesus and brought up as a Christian and God come into our lives, just like Paul, and converted us. And now we are our followers of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. It's great, isn't it? What a wonderful story that is. I love that. Well, before we go into the time of um, worship with our Lord God and just worship him, let me just read you a, a psalm, just part of a psalm from Psalm 95. It says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. In times, we've all been there, in times of trouble, in times where we really need to draw close to God. Isn't it a wonderful to know that God will lift us up, whatever we're going through, in the good times, in the bad times, in the struggling times. God is always there to lift us up. He's an everlasting God. It's fantastic. I'll tell you what, I am so glad in my middle age in my 40s that I found God in my life and invited him into my life. Best decision of my life. Wonderful. I don't know how I ever managed without God. Isn't it? I bet you can all nod and say that. Yeah. Not knowing God in our lives. How would we manage? Fantastic. I'm just so pleased and glad that he, he came into my life. Wonderful. Okay. Less of my wabbling on about different things and wasting time. I'm now going to pass over to the Reverend Dean Courtier with our sermon for today, Strength Out of Weakness. Over to you, Dean. It's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to share the Word of God with you today. I want us to consider how our weaknesses can actually strengthen us. 
Let's have a brief word of prayer as we begin. Lord, I thank you that you have revealed to us in the Bible your love, your mercy and your grace. Thank you that you have provided us with wisdom and guidance and counsel. I pray that today you will help each one of us to be responsive and receptive to your most holy word. Father, speak through your servant. May my thoughts be your thoughts, dear Lord. May everything that is said be from your heart and not my own. Help each of us to fully grasp how our weaknesses can actually strengthen us. For your honour and glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Strength out of weakness. It sounds a little bit impossible, doesn't it? How can something that make us weak actually cause us to be strong? It sounds like a paradox. Strength out of weakness. It's a phrase that at first may not seem to make a lot of sense. Many in the world today consider weakness as a problem, as something negative. And maybe the week that you've been through has left you feeling drained. Maybe there are problems, situations or circumstances in your life that are causing you to feel weak right now. Maybe there's something going on in your life or the life of someone you know that's causing you distress. The Bible teaches us that God is able to turn weakness to strength. It may seem impossible to us, but it is possible for God. God can use our weaknesses to strengthen us. And in the Bible, there are many examples of how God has worked in the lives of his people. People who in the eyes of the world, and even at times in their own eyes, seemed weak. Yet God accomplished things in them and through them. When they seemed to be at their weakest, when the circumstances seemed impossible, when the odds were against them and the situation was grim, that was when God stepped in. That was when God acted, when God transformed, when God moved in miraculous ways. When God showed that in weakness, the weakness could be turned to strength. Need an example from the word of God? Hebrews 11, we read these words. It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. That was from Hebrews 11, 32-34. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David and Samuel, heroes of the faith, people who accomplished great things, people who experienced great blessing, but they were people who were not perfect. They had problems, they had situations, they had circumstances that pressed in and pressed down upon their lives. They experienced distress, they experienced pain, times of suffering, times of weakness. Yet hear those words, their weakness was turned to strength. God worked in them, God worked through them, God changed and transformed them. God strengthened them and he can strengthen you and me today. It's important for us to remember, the heroes of faith were not perfect. You and I are not perfect. We stumble, we make mistakes, circumstances affect us, situations bring us down and our sin-damaged bodies experience illness and fatigue. But God can turn our weakness to strength. There were some examples from the Old Testament times. Let's consider someone from the New Testament. Let's think about the Apostle Paul for a moment. Paul, perhaps one of the most important figures in the history of the Western world. A quick look at the headlines of Paul's life are enough for us to understand his impact on the world. His letters are some of the earliest Christian writings that we have. 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament are attributed to him, and some would describe him as the hero of another, the Book of Acts. Paul was converted on the road to Damascus, and after that he travelled thousands of miles around the Mediterranean, spreading the gospel, telling people about Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Paul was born in Tarsus in modern-day eastern Turkey, 
He was a tent maker by trade, and he was a student of the most renowned Jewish teacher in Jerusalem, and Paul was also a Roman citizen. He was a man who could both work with his hands and write with the eloquence of a Greek philosopher. But Paul was not perfect, his life was not trouble free, and he wrote of a weakness in his own life, a thorn in his flesh, a weakness that God used to make him strong. Paul learned how to be strong in the broken places of life. His weaknesses did not destroy him. With God's help, he gained strength out of his weakness. Listen to the Apostle Paul's words from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged to the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need, my power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. The preacher Andrew Murray wrote years ago in his book Abide in Christ about this comment. The Christian often tries to forget his weakness. God wants us to remember it, to feel it deeply. The Christian wants to conquer his weakness and to be freed from it. God wants us to rest and even rejoice in it. The Christian mourns over his weakness. Christ teaches his servant to say, I take pleasure in my weaknesses. The Christian thinks his weaknesses are the greatest hindrance in life and service of God. But God tells us that it's the secret of strength, the secret of success. It's in our weakness, heartily accepted and continually realised, that gives us our claim and access to the strength of him who has said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The Apostle Paul was confronted by situations that should have ended in death. He was put in prison often and faced death time after time. On five separate occasions, he was whipped by the Jewish leaders who gave him 39 lashes. Three times he was beaten with rods. Once he was stoned. Three times he was shipwrecked. He once spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. He travelled on many long and dangerous journeys. He faced danger from rivers and from robbers. He faced danger from his own people, the Jews, and also from the Gentiles. He faced danger in the cities, in the desert, and on the seas. He faced danger from men who claimed to be believers but were not. He worked long and hard and endured many sleepless nights. He knew what it was to be hungry, he knew what it was to be thirsty, and he often went without food. He even shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep him warm. He endured all of that, yet by the grace of God, he was able to write in Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Do you need God to strengthen you right now? We're going to spend 90 seconds in prayer. All of us will be on mute. And I want us to take this time for us to pray for ourselves and for others. Let's thank God that when we are weak, he is strong. Ask God to help us to apply this truth to our own lives. And pray for someone you know who needs to know that strengthening of God today.
Let's briefly consider five ways our weaknesses can actually strengthen us. First, our weaknesses can strengthen our faith in God. The Apostle Paul had a great faith in God. The basis of his faith was a deep personal relationship with Jesus. Paul's favourite expression was to describe this relationship as being in Christ. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 12, Paul wrote, For I know the one in whom I trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Do you have that kind of faith in God? A deep faith, something that's more than just a casual relationship with God. You see, when we allow Jesus to be the Lord of our daily lives, then we can experience his presence. We can know his strength during times of weakness. Friends, it's only a real, strong, genuine faith in God that is adequate during the weaknesses of life. Second, our weaknesses can strengthen our awareness of God. The weakness from the thorn in his flesh did not stop Paul from discovering what God had planned for him. Didn't keep him away from his destiny. God's purpose and plan for Paul was to preach the gospel. To tell others, to make others aware of the plan of salvation. Paul's awareness of the reality of God and the truth about who Jesus was gave him two overwhelming purposes for his life. First, he wanted every person in his world to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Saviour. Second, he wanted every believer to be Christ-like in their thoughts and actions. Paul refused to let his weakness keep him from his destiny. Our awareness of God's presence in our lives can strengthen us. And instead of focusing on our problems or discomforts, we are able to focus on Jesus and be aware of his help, aware of his guidance, aware of his plan and purpose for each and every one of us. Third, our weaknesses can strengthen our friendship with God and others. Paul had the support of other people during his times of weakness. Soon after his conversion, believers in Damascus welcomed him. and Ananias called him Brother Saul. Barnabas took Paul to the apostles and told them how Paul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. Barnabas also told the disciples how Paul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus at Damascus. And people in churches across Asia Minor, Macedonia, Achaia and Italy also helped Paul. To help us with our weaknesses, God has provided us with a church family. People who will support us in prayer will practically support us in many different ways. We are part of a family and as God's people, we are bound together in friendship and fellowship. We're called together as church, as the children of God, as disciples of Jesus to care for one another, to love one another, to minister to one another, to forgive one another and to pray for one another and support each other. Perhaps it was because of his thorn in the flesh that Paul was able and willing to help others. He was able to understand their pain. He was able to understand their issues and circumstances because he knew what it was like to suffer. Paul had found strength from God during his weaknesses and he told others who were hurting where they could find help. Fourth, our weaknesses can strengthen our motivation to pray. In whatever circumstance or situation we find ourselves, we can pray and trust God because he will listen to our prayer. Perhaps when everything is rosy, when everything is calm, when everything seems to be going our way, that's often when prayer drops down our list of priorities. And then something happens. Something happens that causes us to seek God again in prayer. And we pray and we expect God to act even before we say Amen. But God's timing is always perfect. He knows the end from the beginning and everything in between. And he knows the perfect time for everything that happens in our lives. The truth is prayer should be a constant part of our lives. Not just when we feel weak, not just when we experience trouble, not just when we feel like there are problems or situations or circumstances that drive us to God. 
Daily, we should be motivated to prayer and to speak to our loving God. He loves us, he cares for us, and we can be strengthened by prayer as we communicate with him. Fifth, our weaknesses can strengthen our hope in God. Paul looked beyond the weaknesses to a greater time. Paul was not pessimistic about the life he was experiencing. He had a firm and certain hope in his God. In the midst of weakness, Paul loved life. Part of his great love for life was his optimistic view of his destiny in Christ and eternity in heaven. Heaven, is there any greater hope for us as believers? When we repent and trust in Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, we have the assurance of our sins forgiven and the promise of eternal life. We may experience the weakness of life now, but that will not last forever. When we step into eternity because of our saving faith in Jesus, we will receive a new body, a body immune from physical and emotional disorders. No more pain, no more suffering, an eternity with God. There's no greater hope, no greater joy, nothing greater for us to look forward to than eternity with our Lord and Saviour. The final thought is this. The weaknesses of life do not have to make us weaker. With God's help, we can gain strength during the times of weakness. God is able to transform the weak and wounded into the strong and the resilient. God wants you to be transformed. He is able to bring strength out of the weakness of our lives. God can transform us in many ways. He can use the power of the Holy Spirit. He can use the power of his word. God wants to encourage us daily through his word. God wants to bless us. He wants us to be the people that he has called us to be. Even in our weakness, in him we can be strong. Will you allow God to use your weaknesses to strengthen you so that you can say along with the Apostle Paul, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Whatever it is that you face this week, draw your strength from your Lord. He is the one who sustains. He is the one who enables. He is the one who can carry you through whatever situation or circumstance you are facing this week. Trust him. He is your Lord. He is your saviour. You are his child and he loves you so much. May God bless you and strengthen you in all that you do. Amen. Thank you, Dean. That was great. As I already said, I love the stories of Paul. I just, as I was listening to Dean there, speaking about Paul and all the things he went through, it just makes us think, doesn't it, that Paul went through lots of things that we go through. And it's just wonderful to know that he's such a, a, a large presence in the Bible and he wrote most of the New Testament. And yet he went through so many things that we go through. It just brought to mind to me uh, Acts 16, 16, where Paul and Silas were worshipping and praying in prison. And then there was an earthquake. You probably all know the story. You've probably all read it. And all the chains and the doors open and they're all their chains fell off. Which to me says, when we worship and pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, he loves us so much, all our chains fall off. All our inhibitions, everything that we, we get tangled up with can just fall away because Jesus has the power to release us into a, a wonder. As David would say, I just thought of this word that David says, <laughs> destiny. <laughs> Oh my God, it's me, I'm turning into David Ripond. <laughs> anyway, well, we've come to the end of our service now. We finished with a wonderful song there. And I've just noticed, looking at the words there, all these words, whoever picked these songs, all just match up together. Whether it was someone human or whether it was just something divine, I do not know. But it, they all matched in. It just said there, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. 
and I just said that a little while ago and I've just noticed it as I was singing it there. So we have a wonderful God, but it's time for us to say thank you for joining us. It's time for us to say goodbye to our Facebook viewers. Uh, before we do that, we're just going to pray and close the service and then we'll go over to our local notices together. So let's bow our heads and pray to finish this service together. Father God, it is so wonderful to come together. For people from all over the world that are joining us, people from Facebook, people on YouTube, and people locally that are joining us together for this service to celebrate and worship our Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that everyone is blessed this morning, and most of all, Lord, we pray that you were blessed by everything that was said and done this morning. So in the name of Jesus, be blessed. Amen. Amen.